day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are glad that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. And we do care that you're here. Let us know you're there and who's watching. But also, if you have prayer concerns, put those in the comments or send us a direct message so that we know how to pray for you this week. Continue to reach out to each other and make sure everyone is okay. As we enter into this time of worship, I encourage you to make this space sacred, holy, as God told Moses to take off his sandals. We know that this is holy ground, for the presence of Christ is here. Will you join me in our call to worship? Pack nothing. Bring only your determination to serve and your willingness to be free. Don't wait for the bread to rise. Take nourishment for the journey, but eat standing. Be ready to move at a moment's notice. Do not hesitate to leave your old ways behind. Fear, silence, and submission. Only surrender to the need of time, to love justice, and to walk humbly with your God. Begin quickly before you have time to sink back into old slavery. Set out in the dark. I will send fire to warm and encourage you. I will be with you in the fire, and I will be with you in the cloud. Come, Yahweh, and be our guide and our encouragement. Amen. Today we will observe Holy Communion, and we want to encourage you to, to go get some elements. You may need to pause the video right now and be a part of that. And so as you come back and we celebrate the sacrament together, may we know that we all sit at the table, that Christ has invited all of us to be there. Will you join me in our confession? Merciful God, we like to think that we do everything well. We pat ourselves on the back when we act with love and mercy toward others, complimenting ourselves in self-righteousness. But you know us better. You know our faults and our failings. You know when we falsely proclaim that we are truly living as you would have us to live. Teach us again about your forgiving and healing love. Show us ways of merciful living that we may extend the love and mercy you have given to us to others. Forgive us, we pray, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Rejoice. Know that you are loved by God and that God heals our hearts and forgives our sins. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed and you are forgiven. Amen. The lesson today comes from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter, verse 1 through 14. Listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month, and then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night, they shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be the day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today is the celebration of Holy Communion. And I want to be clear that every one of you, both those who are listening uh, from distance or those who are present here, that you were invited to join with the community of faith in this holy sacrament, this means of grace. You know, this, uh, this act by which God's grace overtakes our lives. And as you are at home, I hope that you have uh, your own juice or crackers or whatever, and that uh, we will include you as we consecrate our elements here. I would also remind you that uh, by email, have a prayer list. And it is printed in your bulletin here. And I'm hoping that will be a guide for you uh, in intercessory prayer. We're not going to offer a pastoral prayer this morning, but rather we're going to move to the proclamation of the Word and into the great thanksgiving for Holy Communion. So join me in just a moment as we prepare ourselves to hear this word from God. You know, in the oldest traditions that we have for the celebration of the Lord's Supper, 
You know, Paul tells us that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples. Now, Passover and the Lord's Supper are very different in many respects. But at the same time, they share many very common characteristics. You know, the beginnings and observance of Passover is found in the story of Exodus. And this comes just before the account of the final plague which befell the Egyptians, which was the death of the firstborn Egyptians. And it is the Passover ritual that is designed to protect the enslaved Israelites from that plague. Now, according to the dating of the Scriptures, the dating in this passage, you know, the Passover celebrated on the 14th day in the month of Nisan, not Nisan, but Nisan, which is basically our March or April. It's primarily a family festival, but sometimes it's expanded, you know, to include other people as well. And the food that is eaten is really the food of travelers in a hurry. You know, the unblemished lamb is roasted on an open fire. It's not cooked in a pot. And, and the bread is unleavened because uh, leavened bread takes too long to rise. And, you know, the bitter herbs are kind of an uncultivated vegetable that can simply be pulled from the ground. And moreover, the participants are to be prepared for flight with their long robes pulled up and girded and the sandals on their feet and the staffs in their hands. The whole lamb is to be eaten and any parts that are left over are to be uh, burned. You know, in our communion services, we always consume all of the wine or bread or either we pour it out to the ground or tear the bread and leave it for the birds to consume. But it's never just left there. You know, in Passover, the blood of the lamb was to be smeared on the framework of the Israelites' doors. And when God would see the blood, He would pass over those houses of the Israelites, and those children of those homes would not be slain. The slaying of the firstborn of the Egyptians, however, would prompt Pharaoh to let the people go from slavery. And thus, it's not the blood itself that saves, but rather it's a sign to God and the symbol of His promise that He will save the people from their bondage. In short, Passover is a celebration of God's redemption of Israel from Egyptian slavery. And moreover, it's at the time of Passover in Exodus that Israel is really formed as a people, as a nation, chosen by God to be His people and as His adoptive Son. Now, we can go back to Isaiah and we can find the instances where you know, God refers to the people as His Son, His adopted Son, just as you and I are beloved children of God, adopted by God into the family of God. Well, in every succeeding generation then, Israel is to celebrate Passover as a remembrance of God's redemption of His people. We share the same experience of remembering our redemption, don't we? You know, 1 Corinthians 11 tells us that as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we show forth the Lord's death until He comes again. We remember Jesus' death on the cross. 
In John's Gospel, Jesus' crucifixion takes place on Passover day. And so John the Baptist can call our Lord the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Similarly, Paul reminds us that Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. You know, we were bought with a price, he tells the Corinthians. That is, we were bought back. We were redeemed, which is the meaning of redemption by the death of Christ on the cross. You know, as I thought about this, I remembered as, as a kid in several of the grocery stores that bought produce from my family, uh, they would always give customers s and green stamps. And people would go home and paste them in the books, and they'd get a, uh, a full book or more than one book, and they could turn in the catalog for s and green stamps, and then they could redeem those stamps for something of value. Well, God has proclaimed our value in redeeming us. As Israel was redeemed from slavery in Egypt, you know, so we are redeemed by the sacrifice of Jesus at Calvary. And Christ's blood symbolized for us in the cup of the Lord's Supper is the sign of God's promised redemption as the blood on the doorpost of the Israelites was a sign of God's promised redemption and deliverance of them. You know, Israel remembers God's redemption of her every time she holds her Passover feast. And so we remember Christ's redemption of us every time we celebrate Holy Communion. But remembering for Israel was much more than simply recalling a past event. Rather, when each subsequent generation of Israelites remembered their deliverance from slavery by uh, celebrating Passover, that became for them a very present event. You know, the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, they say in Deuteronomy. We were there. God did His mighty deed for us who are living now. And so we now are a free people chosen by God to be His. And so it is also with us. God's redemption of us through the cross of Jesus Christ was not just a past event. It is the redemption of you and me right now in our situation. You know, as the old spiritual said, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Well, yes, indeed we were there because Christ died for our redemption. Christ set us free from slavery to sin and death. And His mighty act of love is wrought for us here and now. And we not only remember the Lord's death until He comes, but we participate now in the results of that death. We are redeemed and free and redeemed from all sins and guilt of the past that held us captive. And we're free from the clutches of death forever. You know, right now, today at the Lord's table, you and I are a delivered and redeemed people. But you know, it's even deeper than that. You know, we celebrate the mystery of Christ's presence with us. You know, we don't know how, but we just know that somehow in the receiving of these gifts of bread and wine, that the presence of Christ and the power of Christ come to bear in our lives in a grace-formed and powerful way. You know, every time we celebrate, 
you know, we're taking on the, the presence and power of Jesus. And we do this together. You know, we all join together in that common deliverance, don't we? You know, as Israel was first formed as a people by Passover and Exodus, so we too here at the Lord's Supper are united once again as the people of God. I want you to hear me clearly on that. As we celebrate Holy Communion, we're united once again as the people of God. And this is communion. We are chosen here to commune once again with God and to commune again with one another. And the unity that we share is not to be broken. This unity is of incredible importance to God, I believe, and to Jesus and the life of the church. You know, the Israelites were a traveling people. They were waiting at that first Passover event. You know, they had their robes up and girded about their waist and their feet shod with sandals ready to set forth on an adventure of God. And the Lord had a destination for His people and a journey to be undertaken. You know, they were not at home in Egypt. There was a promised land awaiting for them. And you and I are not at home here where we live either. But the land that we inhabit is, is all too much filled with violence and with evil, and with hatred to be called God's kingdom. See, we cannot be satisfied with the status quo, for it does not at all match God's desires for us. And so God says to us, as He said to Israel, be ready to travel. Set out on the journey of faith to make your home, your neighborhood, and your country into new places worthy of God. And follow the leading of Jesus who promises to be with us always. And be prepared to go wherever God leads. For at the end, there is indeed a promised land called the kingdom of God. Amen and amen. Would you join me as we enter into this time of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you and also with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And so, O oh God, with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Almighty God, pour out Your Spirit gathered upon us here and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. 
poured out for the redemption of the world. Make us one with you and one with each other and one in service to all the world. Will you join as we receive these gifts that God has given us and blessed? The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Let us pray. Oh Lord, you have given yourself to us in this holy mystery. And now we offer ourselves to you in unity and in service. Receive our prayers and ourselves. For this is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now go forth and serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. And bear witness to the love of God. Go with the peace of God and with the love of God and the hope of God. Amen.